everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you may recall from my previous video, I have reviewed the Dell G15 and was greatly surprised by the performance it offered and the price point it was selling for. At the same time, Nitro 5 was also competing with its price to performance ratio. So I reasoned why not put these two against each other in this price versus performance battle and I'm gonna do it right now. So today I've got an exciting showdown for you. A head-to-head -head comparison between two popular gaming laptops, the Acer Nitro V15 and the Dell G15. And we will find out which one is better and why you should pick one over the other. So without further ado, let's get going. So let's talk about how this gaming laptop feel and look. Both the Dell G15 and Nitro 5 has cool gaming vibe. The G15 is a bit bulkier and looks more grown up while the Nitro 5 has a sleek and more attractive design. Now when it comes to the build quality of the Dell G15, it's just okay. Everything is just put together fine, but it doesn't feel like super strong. The material is kind of cheap plastic that easily shows fingerprints and scratches, and the screen and the keyboard area wobble a bit. On the flip side, the Nitro 5 is all black and stay clean from fingerprints, giving it a neat look. Most of it is a good quality plastic with a shiny finish, but the plastic around the screen isn't the best. It feels a bit cheap, however, it doesn't wobble as much as the G15. In terms of how well they are put together, the Nitro 5 feels a bit better than the Dell G15. Although the Dell G15 is more consistent in its build quality throughout the laptop. I've also done a detailed review on both of these laptops. You can do so by clicking on the i button over here. In terms of port selection, the G15 and Nitro 5s are fairly evenly matched. However, the Nitro 5 boasts a slimmer profile, making it more portable for on-the-go gaming. Now the thing I like better about the G15 is some of the ports including the power plug are placed on the back of the laptop, which improves its overall usability. The keyboard and the trackpad on both the laptops are comfortable. Nitro have better key travel and don't need a lot of pressure to work, but they feel a bit soft. In general, typing on it is nice and you won't get tired quickly. While the G15's keyboard doesn't have much longer key travel, but it is quite comfortable. While the touchpad on both the devices is the same, you get it on most of the laptop at this price point, which is nothing sort of amazing but more than enough for basic use. This part should be better viewed in a subjective way, cause personal preferences may change your choice. Now let's talk about what matters the most to the gamer. Both the Dell G15 and the Acer Nitro V15 offers the same spec screen, a 15.6 inch 1080p IPS panel, but there are few key differences in both of these screens. While on the other end, the Dell G15 comes with a lower 120Hz of refresh rate. And the second key difference is the type of panel used in both of these screens. The panel used in the Dell G15 is a WBA type panel, while the panel used in the Acer Nitro V15 is a IPS1. Now you might be thinking what are the differences between these two types of panels. Now let me tell you. So the IPS panel have a wider viewing angle as compared to the WBA panel, which makes the IPS panel superior in terms of the visuals which is somewhat of a disappointment for the gamers who are considering to purchase the Dell G15. Under the hood, CPU is the thing that matters the most other than the graphic card. So if we talk about the CPU, the Dell G15 comes with a i5-13450HX while the Nitro V15 comes with i 5 h Now both the CPUs might sound like the same, just a few differences in the alphabet and the number but they are not. There is quite a lot of differences between both the CPUs and we will look at those differences in our benchmarking. So we will start with the Cinebench R23. The 13450HX is around 5% faster in the multi-core scores and 3% faster in the single core scores, which means that the editing softwares like the Photoshop, Figma, Illustrator and the Animate will work better on the i5-13450HX as compared to the 13420H. But the code compilation performance will be about the same. Next up is the PC Mark 10 where the 13450HX again lead by 5%. However, the difference isn't significant enough to be considered, while performance in Office Suite app and the basic data-driven apps like the Excel, Power BI, MySQL will work better on the Dell G15. Importing a track into FL Studio will also be faster on the 13450HX. Moving up to the 3D Mark benchmark, if we only look at the CPU results, we can observe that the 13450HX is around 6% faster in the Time Spy and massive 16% faster in the Fire Strike. And finally, when tested in Blender and focusing entirely on the CPU, Yet, when the GPU was taken into the account, the Nitro V15 is scored higher. So what does that exactly mean? It suggests that you should look for the Nitro 5 if you want to work on the Blender more efficiently. Now shifting our gears toward the gaming test. So the first game we tested was God of War, which is still a demanding game in 2024. So we set the graphic quality to 1080p high, as you can see, the difference is around 10 FPS, which isn't a big deal for casual gamers, but if every frames matter to you, the 4050 is a better option. 
Next up is the RDR2, where the performance difference is the greatest of any game I've played. Having 2GB more RAM in the newer 3050 helps a lot, as hitting about 44 frames per second in the 3050 on ultra setting is rather good. Now here are some more gaming tests. The results are a kind of mix. In some games, the difference is significant, indicating that upgrading to 4050 from 3050 is worthwhile, while in others, the difference is so minor that upgrading is not a sensible decision. Performance is the key when it comes to gaming laptop. Both the Dell G15 and the Acer Nitro V15 are equipped with the powerful graphic cards and the strong CPUs. But how well do they handle heat during a stress test? So here we have tested both the systems in Permark and Prime 95. Nitro 5, the average CPU temperature was reaching around 71 degrees Celsius and the GPU around 69 degrees. But in the case of G15, the CPU temperature was hitting around 97 degrees and the GPU around 72 degrees Celsius. So it's clear that the G15 is worse when it comes to the thermal in comparison to the Nitro V15. So if you live in a hot climate area, then you will face a problem in Dell G15 regarding the thermal. You can't place it on your lap during gaming. Now if you talk about battery backup on both the laptops, but overall the Nitro 5 will give you a better battery backup as compared to the Dell G15 because of the lower wattage CPU and GPU as compared to the Dell G15. And there you have it, a detailed comparison between the Dell G15 and the Nitro V15. But the ultimate choice depend upon your gaming preferences and the needs. If you need a laptop that can handle productivity apps a little better, or you also like to work on sound design, won't play games that much, and want a better typing experience, then you can go with the Dell Z15. But if you need a better portability, gaming is your also priority, and you also work on editing softwares like the Premiere and the Vinci, or you are lean toward 3D works like the Blender, Unreal Engine, and AutoCAD. Plus, you also want a longer battery backup, then the Nitro V15 is surely the best. So let me know in the comment section which laptop is better than the other. For me, I like the Nitro 5 for its design and the thermal management. Now if you want a review of any other laptops or want a detailed comparison video like this, then comment down below. I will surely try my best to come up with the videos that you like. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you want more tech content like this. And let me know in the comment section which laptop you should pick. Until next time, stay awesome, spread positive vibes, peace out.